Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It is fantastic to have you here. As ever, in today's episode, we are hopefully going to be forging steel for the first time with our brand new to us, Chambersburg 3CH Barhammer. Before we jump in, let's thank today's sponsor, which is Trade. If you struggle to find good coffee at the grocery store and you want to avoid ever running out by making sure that you get it delivered to your door, then you're going to love Trade Coffee. They partner with the nation's top roasters to ensure that you get the best coffee for your tastes. They even have a quiz to make sure that you get the coffee that suits you, whether you want it as beans, whether you want it as ground, whether you want it light, whether you want it as dark, you can take that quiz and they're gonna match you up with the type of coffee that best suits your palate. You can then choose a delivery frequency and it'll appear at your doorstep fresh from the roaster. Then rate and repeat, rate those matches and Trade will continue to delight you with the types of coffee that you love the most. We always love getting our deliveries of Trade coffee here at the workshop and we're sure you will too. The first 100 of you that click my link in the description down below are gonna get 30% off their first bag of coffee from Trade and free shipping is included. Thank you so much Trade for sponsoring this. Thank you guys for supporting our sponsors. Let's get back into the episode and hopefully get forging on some steel. Alrighty, so for this to forge steel, we need to do a few more things. One of the things we notice when we turn this on is that top die, it is pretty chewed up. We'll show you now. Have a look at that. That is not a happy camper of a die. It's a sad camper. If that die was in a national park, in an RV, that would be a sad camper. Yeah, that's not good. That's chewed up two bits. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna pull the die out of there and resurface it on the mill. So what you'll see, we have this block of wood. I'll go right there. And then that's just gonna support the ram up just enough that we can get the die out of it. So let me run you through some terminology on this right here. Even though it's a one piece hammer, this here is still the anvil of the hammer. That's where there's the bulk of the mass. Here, this section here is a sow block. Now in the interests of, I guess, having the last ditch thing you ever need to do be work on the anvil, you have this slightly sacrificial and modifiable piece, which is the sow block. And you'll see we have a dovetail in the anvil, a key, a dovetail in the sow block, a key before we actually get to the dies. And everything here is held together with keys. And it's a very, very shallow taper, and keys are just the absolute best way to hold this stuff together in a way that is removable, but has the least chance of coming loose during the normal vibrations of hammering. And that's why power hammers always have keys. The thing is, is keys are hardened most of the time. And so what can happen is you can go ahead and chip off corners of keys where they mushroom. And of course, if a hardened piece of steel chips off, it can be a bad time. It can be an arterial bleed, a trip to the hospital, which is no fun. So right here, we have a mild steel drift. And what we're gonna do is use that to drive out the key for the top die. So we can pull that off without damaging a hammer, chipping a key, and ending up in the hospital. There we go. Woo! And now, you wanna get that key out of there by hand? There we go. Pull that key out. Pull the little, there's a little bit of shim in there. And there we go, we can drop that down. Oh. Ta-da! Oh boy, we did not make that block tall enough because there is a pin in it. Okay, we've got an extra piece of two by four underneath there. There we go. That's the piece. You know, I was thinking about maybe dropping it just, just for the heck of it. But I guess I won't if you don't want me to. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big old piece of steel. A little, uh, little accident with a top tool is my guess. Mm. You just pointed out that a file cuts it rather easily. So this is probably rather soft. And so an accident that we all make. Letting something get away from me under the power hammer dies. An accident on a pair of dies that are not too hard can cause that. So. Key things here. Uh, as I resurface this, I need it to be as flat, square true as possible to how it's gonna sit in the actual machine. And that's something that I should have done. I should have looked at whether we're contacting on the bottom of the dovetail or the side of the dovetail. My guess is we're contacting at the bottom as opposed to up here. But a little flip, oh my goodness gracious me! That's heavy. We'll flip it over and have a look at it and see if we find out otherwise.
Now that is looking nice. Alrighty, milling off the dye was super easy. It went swimmingly. The face mill worked a treat. Will had to make an Allen key to fit inside the impact driver to pull this off the bottom die, which means that he was able to drive the key out. And we're now gonna be able to take the bottom die out because I want to clean up the bottom die as well. I don't think the bottom die is gonna need milling, but I at least wanna hit it with an angle grinder to clean up the edges and just get a good starting point so that we can also see what wear and tear we put on the machine. So we've got that nice metric of this is what it was like when we started using it. I can feel it. You think it's gonna need to be milled? I can feel the dish in it. Uh-oh. Yeah. That's okay, we know how to do that. Oh, really good. Gosh. Is that heavy? I think it's heavier than the other one. There we go. Oh wow, yes. Will, you are correct. Oh man, you could definitely eat soup out of this one. That thing Holy is dish. Smokes. That's crazy. Okay, onto the mill with this. Yes, look at that. We got these things cleaned up nicely. Those dies lined up just beautifully. Not only side to side, but also I can't see any daylight through it, which means that we picked the right reference of square because we got it bang can't on. See any daylight. It's, 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 it's We got it dead nuts. I mean, we got it fantastic. A little bit better than the Pilkington, huh, Alec? A little better than the Pilkington dies. The Pilkington dies? We're out of square by a long shot. And it really didn't take very long at all. I should have done this on the Pilkington dies. These here are perfect. And they're ready for some hot steel. And oh, wouldn't the timing be beautiful because inside our forge is one piece of three and a half inch round steel. That piece of steel is almost ready. And so Will, feel free to do the honors. And we're gonna let the hammer warm up. That was so much force. This is childhood dreams coming to fruition. Being able to take a piece of steel like that and do that much metal moving, not even I understand how incredible this is. And let me tell you, it's incredible. Will, do you understand how incredible it is? I don't know, I haven't tried it yet. Well, you know what I think that means? I think it's time for Matt, I mean, no, you can try the hammer. Yeah. <laughs> it's Will's turn. It's got really good control. For the amount of top end it has, I'm feeling good about the control right now. 
The more we use it, we're gonna learn more about how to use it in the best way. I might have mentioned this at the end of the last episode, but when we fired this up and we we're just messing with pieces of wood, we hit the top. Hitting the top means you send the ram up so high that it hits the uh, cylinder cover at the top of the ram cylinder. And that's really bad. And it's happened a couple more times as we've been forging today. And it's a scary thing to hear it hit the top. Because if we break that housing off of there, that's an expensive problem and that could also come down and kill somebody. So, why it hits the top, I don't know. It's potentially the valve timing. We can potentially work on that. What can definitely help is the operator using it in a slightly more conservative way. On a machine like this, I'm used to coming down and laying down on the treadle and going to town on it. We've got to be a little more careful with this because if we lay down on that treadle real fast, that's when we send it up to the top. Overall, I'm thrilled. I cannot believe it. Got this thing off the truck. We had such a stressful and worrying time about that motor. Fortunately, we got it resolved. And here we are. The beast works. I'm very, very grateful. I'm very, very happy. I feel very blessed that we have this in the workshop. I can't wait to show you more of what we can do with this machine, so be sure to subscribe if you haven't to follow along with everything that happens in this workshop because we feel very grateful to be able to share it. As we end this video, let's thank our sponsor who makes all of this possible. Today's sponsor was Trade. Don't forget, the first 100 of you that click the link down below are gonna be getting 30% off your first bag of coffee with them. Thank you, Trade. Thank you for watching. See you soon.